Hey everyone, so this is going to be my review of the Theo Audio, uh, I think it's called the Legacy 3 or the Theo Audio 3 and um, you guys know which, which one this is. It's the, uh, the 3BA set. Um, so first I'll cover, this isn't the case. If you've seen my unbox video that I have, um, it comes with a different case. That case is a little hard to deal with, a little uh, difficult, <clears throat> um, kind of fumbly, you know, it's a little hard to, uh, to open the latch on it. So I saw this case out on AliExpress and I thought, that looks a lot like the UT12 case, you know. And I thought, let me try it, let me order it. So <clears throat> ordered this thing in and I'll start by saying it was, it was $2.10. Yeah, and I got it, and my buddy has the UT12, and he showed me his case. I'm not gonna say it's the exact same case, but it is friggin' close. Um, same size, uh, I think his is just a little bit deeper. Same latching mechanism, it's a very positive latch, very easy to open and close, but stays locked really well. Um, the case is very light, and it has foam padding on both sides that is molded in there so it really fits nice it's not going to come out very protective whereas the case that comes with the audio um, the bottom has some foam foam rubber protection that's actually not as soft as this but the top is just plastic so they could they could bang around in there I, I don't know how you guys handle yours mine pretty much stay at home I don't take the nice ones out I usually leave them uh, at home and if I, I take out my T1s or something if I'm going to work to office which, you know, none of us are doing now anyway, right? We're all working at home, if we're, if we're working. Um, so anyway, I, this case, other than missing the little pole inside, it was the same thing as my buddy's <laughs> UT12 case. And it was $2.10 on AliExpress. And, and I, it, it took a month to get to me. I, I mean, I know that. I expect that anything coming from, from the East is going to take a while. Um, but two things. One, I love it. $2.10. It's light, protective, latches well. IEMs fit really well inside of it, no problems. But the sad thing is that the $2,000 UT12s come with a $2.10 case. Anyway, uh, enough on the case. We'll, we'll, we'll move on to the, the IEMs now. Um, <clears throat> so, let's uh, untangle this cord. The <clears throat> Theo Audio um, 3s. So, these are three BAA. You guys already know that. I'm sure if you're here seeing this video, you probably know about about uh, uh, something about these, and you're kind of following up. If you're like me, when I start looking for something, because this is a, a, a hobby for me, right? And so when I start to look for something, I uh, I read and everything I can, and view everything I can, and try to find out all the information that I that I can about them, right? Um, now, this is the cable they come with. Nice cable. The chin slider actually works. It actually stays stays in place instead of just dropping down or sliding that way. So when you put it up on your chin, you know, when you put when you slide it up, it actually stays there, which is nice. Um, it's braided, so it looks like a, a bluish silver and copper. Um, nice, nice connector, 3.5 jack, and. The only drawback to this cable, the only drawback is that it's, oops, sorry, which is actually a function of the IEMs themselves, is that it's QDC. I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of QDC. I, I mean, it, it's a nice connection, you know, it, it fits nice into the ear, it's very tiny, and, it, and I like the, the loop on here. But the problem with the QDC is that you, you're, you're kind of limited on your cable choices unless you use an adapter. And adapters are okay, but then you got more connections coming in and out and, and those get loose and shaky and you, you get some scratchiness, that kind of thing. And it doesn't fit as well because any adapter you put on is going to raise this out. I mean, that's just a given. Um, the QDC for me, they, they don't stay like this one's already like, I, I, I don't know if it's just it gets worn, if, if wax or body oils from wearing it get in here and make it slippery. I've tried cleaning this off with alcohol. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference, but I've had this just fall off really easy a couple of times. They don't get a very deep bite in, right? That's the thing about the QDC. 
and your cable selection also is an issue. I've noticed that if I go out and look for cables, I'm going to say only like 5% of the cables I find come in QDC. Now, there's there's more of the uh, Chi-Fi, if you want to call it that, uh, IEMs hitting the market with QDC connectors for whatever reason. And so you might see some of the manufacturers starting to make more cables available with QDC connectors. But I, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, I have seen where, because you can actually take this off and slip a two pin, just a plate, straight two pin connector in there and it'll work. You, you may not get the phase correct. You might have to flip it around and test it out, but um, it, it, it'll work. And I, I've seen people do it, but then it raises it way out here. So you get this big thing like this sticking out. It doesn't look good. And I mean, if you care about that, but it doesn't fit right either. Cause then you've got this big like metal tube coming off because it has to sit on top of this. So it bites down in there a little further, but it, it you know, it's it's not not, not quite as, as comfortable, um, be the way I, I would say it. So uh, I wish it was MMCX. That for me is my favorite connector. I've had very good luck with MMCX. Two pins, I find sometimes they get worn and start falling out too. I, I have never had that with MMCX. They always seem to get a really good connection for me, really crisp and stays together. And they have a nice tiny connector uh, depth so it fits well in my ear right but i, I don't know you know whatever it, it, this is working right now um the cable's nice i really like the cable's beautiful i mean look at this thing it's it, it, it's like jewelry right um i don't know if you could see that shine in there but it is it is really nice um the it stays untangled uh it's kind of nice i listen a lot at night time and i kind of put these, put these down here see them. I, I listen a lot at night um, when everyone's kind of like down for the evening like my daughter's in bed and my son's in bed and my my wife's you know relaxing or whatever and, and I'll, I'll kind of listen in the dark a little bit because it's quiet and, and no one's bothering me um, and I like cables that I don't have to fumble with too much and this cable doesn't get tangled um, you saw when I took it out it it, it comes out pretty easy uh, unfolds without being getting really tangled up um, I really like that about it so that's for me cables you know I'm kind of over the whole big big blingy cable thing and really I care about cables that work well and just get out of my way they don't they don't really cause a problem for me so a thin cable that doesn't get tangled I'm all for it I don't I don't care if it's covered in black fabric and doesn't shine at all doesn't matter to me um, to the sound quality, <clears throat> I, I'm going to tell you, I love these things, right? And, and, and love's a strong word, but I, I really, really like these. I So for a long time now, I, so I, I've got a few pairs of earphones that I keep and won't give up because I, I, I kind of think of them almost as a reference, but I just really enjoy using them. Um, I have some JBC FX1100s that I... I love those things. No matter what I'm listening to, I stop, I put those in, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why I keep these. These things are, I mean, their timber is so good. The quality and the tonality is so good. And it doesn't matter what I listen to. Any genre of music sounds really good on those. So I, those are something I always keep. And, and I, I compare a lot of stuff to those. Um, the other thing recently that I was keeping uh, for comparison, well, also the Blondes. You guys know about the Blondes. Uh, the company that's making those, they got lucky, you know. I got my blondes for 26 bucks on AliExpress and, and, and those, those things are ridiculous. I mean, they sound so good for, especially for 26 bucks. I mean, they can't even touch anything for under say 300 that sounds as good as those, but, um, but they have their limitations too. They don't sound good with every song or with every type of music. Um, and, and their amp pairings, they're a little particular as well. Um, what I'll say though is, uh, the other pair I have that is. Uh, one of my favorites and that I keep around and I and I compare to is my AudioSense T800s. And they have kind of a V signature, you know, but I really enjoy the tonality of those and the timber. Now, they don't have a lot of bass. That's where they lack. And you can kind of, you know, play with the EQ a little bit on your device, your DAP or whatever, and you can... Um, uh, you know, get a good tight fit, good seal with certain uh, uh, earbuds to try and increase the bass with them. But 
it's they do lack a little in the bass but overall the sound quality they put out is is really good and I, at least i've always thought that they were they were really good and i'll tell you that i got these i unboxed them and i was kind of excited to get them and test them out so i plugged them in right away and started listening to them without flipping the little switches on here these little uh sorry let me take that off of there those little switches hopefully you can see that okay right there um they they do make a difference there it's not a gimmick they they make a big difference um the the cable sorry, i'm gonna get fancy here hold on put this like this. i i popped these in and i i took a listen and immediately was was blown away by the sound the the detail retrieval wasn't something i'd really heard before and, and i've had some iems with some serious detail retrieval but uh, these had something about them that was different and i i don't know it's just the tuning obviously um but the the and it wasn't symbol symbol it right uh it it wasn't piercing it didn't hurt my ears at all like I've had happen, like with the Tim T ones, when I first put the, put those things in, when I got them, you know, last year, those things pierced my ear like a spike. I mean, those things were had a very sibilant, very high, you know, high end that just, I didn't like it. Um, these didn't have that, but they had this crazy detail retrieval that the, that what happened was the first hour I was, so I was wearing them for like 25, 30 minutes and I started feeling nauseous. I was like, what is wrong? And I took them out. And then I started feeling better and I thought, is there something wrong with my inner ear? Am I getting sick or what's the deal? So I put them back in and, and that detail retrieval was so strong that I started feeling that way again. And so I took them out and I flipped the switches down so you, and it sh you could figure out how to get the detail down. The first switch on the inside is left flipped up is high detail or, or high frequencies. And dropping it down reduces that high frequency retrieval, the, the detail retrieval, right? And the other switch helps with the bass by raising it up, uh, leaving it up, more bass, down, less bass. So I flip the, the one on the left down, the inside, I guess you'd say, and that one uh, made a difference. And I didn't feel that sickness anymore it was kind of strange but it also was a lot less detail and I was like I really like the way it sounds the other way you know what can I do so I, what I do sometimes with IEMs that are sibilant because it could be a, me a mechanical issue you know inside that BA and, and I know it's different than a, a diaphragm driver where you've got this this diaphragm moving in and out right and a coil behind it moving it in and out so the BA works different. It's kind of a box, and there's a magnetic and uh, a, a magnetic uh, coil, I guess you call it, in the center of it, and it's causing a flap to move ever so slightly, and and that creates the the same type of thing, but it, but it drives the air out through the center of the BA instead of out through one side of it, right? So um, it, there's a mechanical action there, and and what I did is the same thing I did with my T1s. I plug these into my uh, dark voice. It's a tube amp. I, you may or may not have heard of it, but that thing puts out like a full watt and I can never turn the dial on that. No matter what headphone or amp I listen to, I can't turn the dial past like the, the one third of the way or what would be say nine o'clock on that, on that dial because it just is too loud. So I plug these in and I plug, turned it all the way up to 50%. I mean, I could hear these things from across the room playing. Um, I left it that way for about 15, 20 minutes. Then I came back and I turned it down to that 15 mark, which is loud, um, but not too loud. And I left it for like two hours. Um, came back, plugged it back into my DAP, my um, my uh, M11 Pro, and that that detail retrieval was still there. I mean, the detail is fantastic, but I wasn't feeling that sick feeling anymore. It wasn't that high, uh, that kind of high frequency detail in there was gone and it was very smooth but the detail was still very strong um, so needless to say I kind of fixed that issue by by putting these things on a stronger amp and blasting them and and if you have that issue you could do the same thing so uh, so 
so on to like the different songs I used and uh, what sounds I could hear and what things I really liked about these. Um, what I found was that the signature was not like what I would call V-shaped. It was somewhat of a flat signature. And, I, and I've seen the graphs. We all have seen the graphs. There's several sites out there that have graphed them. Um, but, you know, you got to listen to it because graphs can say one thing and your ears can say another. So uh, I, I felt like everything was where it should be. I didn't feel like like the voices or vocals were back too forward or too far in the back where they where they felt like I was having to listen for them instead of them being where they should be. There were some songs where the vocals felt uh, forward, where the mid-range felt a little forward, like stronger than it should. Um, some of those songs were like Amy Winehouse songs, but you know, a lot of her songs are like that because uh, you know they're about her vocals, most of her songs. They're not really about the music per se. So um, I did notice that with her. Same with thing with some Alicia Keys songs that I listened to. Um, her voice is very strong, and for some of the songs, it sounded like her voice was overpowering um, the song itself with these. That's not to say I didn't like it. I loved it. I love the way vocals sound on these. <clears throat> they, they sound very real and very smooth, and, and I really feel like that person could be standing there in front of me uh, singing. It, it feels that kind of realism with these. So the bass in these is excellent. Um, the mid-range is very good and the treble and of course the detail retrieval is fantastic um one of the so so i some of the songs that i used i used nora jones come away with me well actually so it's from her album come away with me right and i've got a limited edition version that's been uh, uh remastered and it's uh, an, uh from a sax cd so it's a like what you call a dsd file um the song is called seven years and so it's Nora Jones come away with me limited edition and it's seven years is the song and when that when that uh, is playing uh, there's a guitar string scrape and you know what I mean so when they've got their 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 hand on the neck of the guitar and they slide down the string right so they scrape along the string and it gives that that um, scrape I can't hear that scrape on a lot of other IEMs on these I can hear it clearly and not so clearly that it overpowers and feels out of place it, it's just right. It feels like that's exactly how it should sound. That person's in front of me playing guitar. That's how it feels, you know? So, and that's right around 13 seconds if you ever listen to that song. Um, the other one is a Diana Krall Live in Paris album. <clears throat> There's a song in there, A Case of You. I mean, every song on that album sounds great on these, right? You really get that sense of being out in the crowd listening to her sing. The, the interesting thing, though, is that on that song, A Case of You, there's a cough in the crowd someone starts coughing it's a woman and she starts coughing and you can hear it right and i can hear it with most iems i'm not saying that i that you know this brought something out that nothing else brought out um it's around 13 seconds into that song and then she actually coughs again a little later the difference is that with some iems you hear the cough with this iem i heard the cough and a slight echo in other words it, it sounded like someone coughing in a hall which is what it was and it sounded very realistic um and I know that's not music, but the fact that it was able to get reproduce that little sound in the background so clearly and correctly was was pretty amazing to me. Um, for a hundred and fifty dollars set of IEMs, right? That's what we're talking about here. Um, I've had I had a pair of IEMs in the past that were quite a bit more and um, couldn't reproduce that that sound that correctly. Um, uh, Amy Winehouse, uh, her album Amy Winehouse at the BBC. There's a song, uh, it's the first song actually on the album, it's called Now You Know. Um, that song is hard for IEMs to reproduce correctly. And by that I mean, you know, it's it's a live recording and it was recorded fairly well, but not really well, I guess. And so some, a lot of IEMs I've listened to, you know it's a live recording because you can hear the crowd and you know it's, it's you know that way. It just doesn't sound... Like I can't pick out where it's at. I'm in the crowd. I can't pick out where she's at in instruments. And and it doesn't sound, it sounds flat, right? In a lot of IEMs. On these, I, I can really hear the crowd correctly and the clapping and people yelling and whistling. And I could, and when she starts singing, it comes through very clear, very forward. Um, the music, it feels right. It feels behind her. And the, the, it makes you feel that sense of like a live performance. Like you really get that. That's not something I get with a lot of other IEMs. 
Um, these do that really well. I found the blondes didn't do it really well. The blondes don't sound good on that song. Um, they sound good on other ones, but not on that song. These sound really good on it. The audio sense, they sound okay on that song, but they don't have the proper bass to, to deal with it correctly. Um, these do. Uh, Alicia Keys, the Here, her album Here, there's a song called uh, More Than We Know on there. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff in that song. That that song is a very well produced song. Um, and they th there's a lot of clapping that goes on in that song from the people that are performing the song. And the clapping sounds very realistic. Um, there's a bunch of guitar scrapes right around a minute and 13 seconds into that song. And those guitar scrapes sound very real and very good. Um, there's an interesting thing to that song where they sometimes you'll when producers uh, produce a song they'll add distortion to the song right there's no reason for there to be distortion it's all recorded like you know just a few years ago and the super high quality equipment i mean it was alicia keys you know she's she's a diva so she's got the best of everything when it comes to recording songs for her so they added a, a kind of a rough distortion just at, at the the um upper frequency of that song and you can hear it now the thing is on some IEMs that I listen to that song with it sounds like crap it doesn't sound good that that distortion overpowers and makes the sound makes the makes it sound like there's something wrong with the equipment you're using to listen to it like like what's wrong with my earphones they're not working right you know with these it just sounds good it didn't sound like that you understand that that's a production value that's been added in and it sounds really good um, and the guitar strings, a lot of guitar plucking going on in that song, both uh, um, electric and uh, acoustic, and it just sounds really good. Um, the last song that I'll throw out there is from the Fleetwood Mac album, Rumors. I've got the Japanese release of that, which has been remastered, and I don't know why. I mean, I know why songs or albums, are, there's Japanese versions of the same album. Um, it's just it's a kind of a, a marketing technique they use in Japan to sell albums. So they'll, they'll release the same album, just add a couple extra songs, and but it's the same recordings and everything usually. But this particular one isn't. It's got a, a remastered recordings, and they're very very good. And it was and I think the ones I got are taken from a SAC CD, an SA CD, and so they're very clear and they actually don't even sound exactly like the album. They sound much better than the original album, um, but. That said, uh, there's a song on there called uh, I Don't Want to Know, and there's a guitar string finger drag. So when someone's playing the guitar and they're just moving their fingers fast, you can hear little little like chirps right on the string. And some IEMs and device matchings or pairings will produce that correctly, and some will. It it just sounds like a little screech. It doesn't sound like you don't you don't hear the fingers moving over the rib of the string of the metal, metal strings right so you don't get the that realism in there um this one produced that really well really well uh there's a lot of cymbal strikes that go on especially right around 14 seconds in that fleetwood mac song um and the cymbal strikes are are very realistic i mean you know exactly how he's striking that cymbal right because it it just sounds so good um, the snare drum throughout the whole song uh, sounds very good, very clear. Really sounds like a tight, you know, skin on top of a drum. Um, very realistic. A lot of hi-hat strikes. Uh, very A lot of hand claps that are very real. That's a really good song on that Fleetwood Mac um, Rumors album that's a Japanese release, remastered. Um, if you can find that song, I Don't Want, I Don't Want to Know, you'll hear all this stuff in there. And it's... It, really shines on these these earphones right here so for me 159 bucks on these and i'm not really easy to please when it comes to this stuff i mean i'm kind of particular i'm not like a rich guy or something you know i i've got a pretty good career and everything and i have a budget i can spend every month on this stuff and that's what i do it's it's a hobby for me and my my family knows that um so so if i spend 150 200 500 whatever you know i i i I want to get what I'm paying for and it, it better meet up to it, especially when I've got these now at 159 bucks. You know, I, I mentioned the audio sense T 800s. Those were kind of my reference. I was listening to these for about a week solid. Cause I just really liked them. I put in the audio sense and I'm like, Oh my God, these sound terrible. I, I didn't want to say that to myself. I was like, like, how do they sound? They sound terrible. No, no, they don't sound terrible. I, I paid $300 for these. They couldn't sound terrible, but they don't sound terrible 
they they just I I put them I put these back in and I started going back and forth with them. Uh, they sound great still the T eight hundreds, but they're missing the sub bass and bass that these produce. And there's a tonality that these have that those just don't have. So if you had the three hundred dollar Audio Sense T eight hundreds and the Theo Audio one hundred fifty nine, the Theo Audio wins. It just does, right? So right away now I've got you know these audio senses I'm going to sell because when I listen to them I feel like I'm missing something now because I've got these so and especially since I paid 300 bucks for them I'm like okay I got to sell these now because it's just they're just going to sit there in my drawer uh, these are what I'm going to listen to all the time so highly recommend these you will not be disappointed now I, again please remember this is my hearing and my ears and my brain's interpretation of what it's hearing and everyone is going to be just a little bit different. There's things people like. Some people like bass. Some don't. Some people like uh, a very sibilant high end, you know, high frequency delivering IMs, and some don't. Uh, everyone has their own their own things they like. I, I told you some of the songs I listen to, and and I really like. I listen to rock and roll in these. I like Aerosmith. I like Pink Floyd a lot. I listen to a lot of Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd Animals album is one of my favorite. Um, I listen to Metallica. I listen to Chris Cornell. Um, uh, uh, the Cars, um, a lot of Led Zeppelin. The the um, reproduction of these is good on almost everything I listen to. I couldn't find something that I went, uh, it doesn't do that very good. They do everything really good. Keep in mind that on s some female vocal albums or v female vocalist, uh, Beyonce, uh, Alicia Keys and whatnot, their voices might sound a little forward, but still sounds really good um i did listen to some classical on this i wish i'd written his name down i'm sorry i didn't uh it, there's a is a chinese man he's a very famous pianist um brilliant pianist and i was listening to him playing some uh um some chopin chopin i don't know if i'm saying that right um it's c-h-o-p-i-n but it was beautiful i mean the the piano keys and that's a hard thing to reproduce correctly piano keys they're, when they're being played, having, having it feel like that piano is really there in the room with you, that's not easy to do because, well, I should say, with these, I could hear what, or felt like I could hear, my brain could kind of like picture the hammer, you know, they hit the key stroke and that key stroke hits a hammer onto a string in the piano, right? And so my dad played piano and I, I you know, I know how it works, right? And I, I remember how it sounded when my dad was playing the piano growing up all the time. And the piano strike sounds very realistic to me. When I'm listening to this, I can visualize that three-dimensional image of that that strike on the key string with the with the piano. So they did a very good job of that. Um, guitars in general sound fantastic on this. String instruments. <clears throat> There's a couple of uh, Miles Davis songs. Uh, one of them is uh, um, from the from the uh, uh, Someday My Prince Will Come album. There's a song called T O T E O. And there's right around four minutes or so into that song, there's a trumpet, uh, a note transition that he does with the trumpet that's amazing. Um, my uncle was a professional um, a jazz musician. He, that's what he, he did for a living for a long time. And I used to go watch him in nightclubs and he played trumpet. That was his instrument. And the listening to the transitions this, that Miles Davis makes on the trumpet at four minutes in on that album is incredible on these. They it's very hard for some IEMs to keep up with that because and you have to listen to it really to understand and I can't play it I'm not going to get tagged on YouTube but um, if you get a chance to listen to that Miles Davis Sextet Someday My Prince Will Come is the album and then Tio is the uh, song and the trumpet transition at about four and a half minutes in will give you a really good uh, listen to what this thing can do with, with the trumpet and how it can transition between those notes so cleanly and sound so realistic, right? So, okay, highly recommended. If you can, go out and get yourself these for 150 bucks. You can't go wrong. That that's my opinion. So, take it for what it's worth. Thanks for watching.